Hello and very warm welcome to all. My name is Abhinisha and today I'm going to explain you the chapter The Three Questions. This the story is written by Leo Tolstoy. Leo Tolstoy was a Russian writer who is regarded as one of the greatest author of all time. He first achieved literary acclaim to his 20s with his semi-autobiographical trilogy Childhood, Boyhood and Youth. A Parable is a short story with a moral lesson. A parable usually has human characters. This parable concerns a king who wants to find the answers to what he considers to be and three most important questions in life. Open page number 52, chapter 2.2, the three questions. Once a certain king had an idea, idea means a thought or a suggestion, if he always knew the right time to begin everything. This means that he is asking a question that he wanted to know what is the right time to begin everything. If he knew who were the right people to listen to. Again one more question he is asking that who are the right people to listen to and who to avoid the most important thing to do. He would never fail in anything he would undertake. Undertake means a commitment or a work or responsibility to do something. And above all, if he always knew what was the most undertake, since he was convinced that he was right in thinking this way, convinced means uh, making someone understand or agree, he had a proclamation made in his kingdom. Proclamation means a public announcement or an official announcement dealing with a great matter of importance. He would give a great reward to anyone who would teach him what the right time was for every action, who the most necessary people were and how he might know the most important thing to do. Now in this paragraph, the king is asking three reward winning questions. Number one, what was the right time to begin everything? Second, who were the right people to listen to and whom to avoid? Third one, what was the most important thing to do? Now what happened after his proclamation? Many learned people, means very scholar people, came to the court. But they all gave different answers. Their answers were varied, not same. In reply to the first question, some said that to know the right time for every action, one must draw up. Draw up means planning, planning for something. Draw up in advance a table of days. Draw up means to plan a table of days, months and years and must live strictly according to it. Others declared that it was impossible to decide beforehand. What is beforehand? Something which is in prior. The right time for every action but that not letting oneself to be absorbed in idle pastime. Here absorbed means having one attention fully engaged in any work. In idle pastime, pastime means hobbies. One should always attend to all that was going on and then do that was most essential. Yet others said that it was impossible for one man to decide correctly the right time for every action and that the king should instead have a council of wise people. What is the meaning of council? Councils are the administrative bodies for the king. So the people have different and varied opinions that they should have a council of wise people who, who would help him to fix the proper time for everything. Now what happened to the second question? Equally varied were the answers to the second question. Some said the people the king most needed were his counsellors. Means he, his administrative people, those who are wise people, those who are always with him to decide. Others the priests, others the doctors, while some said the warriors were the most necessary. For the third question about what was the most important occupation. Occupation. 
it means a job or a profession some replied that the most important thing in the world was science means a systematic knowledge of anything others said it was skill in the warfare and others again that it was a religious worship the king was convinced by none of these answers and gave the reward to none he decided instead to go to a hermit who was widely renowned for his wisdom hermit means a person living alone and who hardly contacts with other people renowned it means famous and wisdom the person who has knowledge the hermit lived in a small hut in a forest which he never left he spoke only to common folk so the king put on simple clothes and approaching the hermit's cell dismounted his horse and left his bodyguard behind cell is a small room of hermit and dismounted dismounted means getting down from anything that is riding like bicycle or a horse when the king arrived the hermit was digging the ground in front of his hut digging means breaking up the ground with a tool he greeted the king but went on digging he gave a good polite gesture and welcomed the king the hermit was frail and weak and each time he struck the ground with the spade and turned over a little earth he breathed heavily frail means weak and delicate and struck is the past tense of strike it means that hitting something with a tool he breathed heavily since he was weak so every time when he was striking the ground with the spade he was breathing heavily the king went up to him and said i have come to you wise hermit to ask you to answer three questions how can i learn to do the right thing at the right time who are the people i most need and whom and to whom should i therefore pay most attention and what affairs are the most important and need my first attention attention means noticing something with great regard to the great importance the hermit listened to the king but said nothing he just spat on his hand and resumed digging resumed digging means again uh, started digging after giving a pause the king watched in silence for a while then feeling sorry for the hermit he said you are tired let me take the spade and work a while for you king is feeling very sad to sympathy the hermit silently handed over the spade and sat down on the on the ground when he had dug two beds the king stopped and repeated his questions here bed beds means a bottom of something that is serving as a base like it's a bed for sowing the seeds here the king stopped and repeated his question the hermit again gave no answer but rose rose is the past tense of rise stretched out his hand for the spade and said now rest a while and let me work a bit but the king did not give him the spade and continued to dig one hour passed and another the sun began to sink behind the trees sun be- began to sink behind the trees it means sun is setting and the day is ending and the king had a last stuck the spade into the ground and said I came to you wise wise one for an answer to my questions if you can give me none please so no and i will go home here comes someone running said the hermit let us see who it is the king turned round and saw a bearded man come running out of the forest the man held his hands pressed against his stomach and blood was flowing from under them when he reached the king he fainted and fell to the ground moaning feebly moaning feebly means he was making a low sound expressing the grief and he had the since he was bleeding so the strength was not too much the king and the hermit unfastened the man's clothing there was a large wound this means the injury in his stomach the king washed it as well as he could and bandaged it with the with his handkerchief and a towel the hermit had but the blood would not stop flowing and the king again and again 
remove the bandage and soak with warm blood and washed and rebandaged the wound when at last the blood stopped flowing the man revived revived means he became conscious coming to life and asked for something to drink the king brought some fresh water and gave it to him meanwhile the sun had set and it had become cool so the king with the hermit's help carried the wounded man into the hut the man lay there quietly with his eyes closed by now the king was so tired after his walk and the work he had done that he lay down himself and also fell asleep when he awoke in the morning it took his some time to remember where he was and who was the strange bearded man who was the strange bearded man the unknown man and who was the strange bearded man lying by his side and gazing intently at him gazing intently means he was watching very closely and in an eager attention forgive me said the bearded man in a weak voice it means he was saying sorry in a very polite manner when he saw that the king was awake and was looking at him i do not know you and i have nothing to forgive you for said the king you do not know me but i know you i am that enemy of yours who swore to revenge himself on you because you executed his brother and seized his property let's understand few meanings from this swore swore is the past tense of swear it means swore swore is the past tense of the word swear it means making promise to do something and revenge revenge is the action of harming someone in return execute it means to carry out a sentence of death seize to control or possession of something or someone i know you i knew you had gone alone to see the hermit and i resolved to kill you on your way back resolve means settle or to find a solution but the day passed and you did not return so i came out of my ambush to find you here ambush means a place used for hiding before attack your bodyguards recognized me and wounded me i escaped from them but would have bled to death had you not dressed my wound i wish to kill you but you have saved my life now if i live and if you wish it i will serve you all my life the king was glad means he was happy and pleased to have made peace with an enemy so easily peace means in perfect harmony and to have gained him for a friend he not only forgave him but said he would send his men and his own physician to attend to him physician means a medical practitioner a doctor the king then took leave of him and went out of the hut to look for the hermit before giving away he wished once more to beg for an answer to the questions he had asked the hermit was outside on his knees sowing seeds in the beds that had been dug the day before dug is the past tense of dig the king approached him and said for the last time i pray you answer my questions wise man you have already been answered said the hermit still crouching means bending on his thin legs and looking up at the king who stood before him what do you mean asked the king do you not see replied the hermit if you had not pitied on my weakness yesterday and stayed to dig these beds for me you would have gone back and been killed by that man so the most important time was when you were digging the beds and i was the most important man and to do me good was your most important business afterwards the most important time 
was when you were attending to that man for if you had not bound his wounds he would have died without having making peace with you so he was the most important man and what you did for him was your most important business remember then there is only one time that is important now it is the most important time because it's the only time when we have any power the most necessary person is the one with whom you are for you do not know whether you will ever have dealings with anyone else and the most important thing is to do this person good because for that purpose alone were you sent into this life with this we come to an end of the video if you have any doubts do let me know through your comments till then take care stay safe stay indoors bye bye